Welcome to Navigating Cancer Together. My name is Talaya Dindi. I'm a cancer thriver, cancer doula, independent patient advocate, and owner of On the Other Side. I use my experience to help others get on the other side of cancer. Gaps between the guidance, emotional support, and education that are needed and what one receives can be huge. This podcast fills those gaps by sharing stories, resources, and information about all things related to cancer and wellness. I interview guests from all walks of life who are living with cancer, caregivers, and those who are thriving on the other side. Also, I talk with organizations, healthcare professionals, and experts in the health and wellness spaces who offer complementary and integrative care. Join me. We are in this together. Hello, everyone. This is Talaya Dindi from OnTheOtherSide.life, and you're listening to Navigating Cancer Together, the show that has something for everyone facing cancer. Why? Because everyone is different with different needs, beliefs, and perspectives. Thank you for joining us for this episode. I encourage you to open your minds and your hearts. Today, our very special guest is Dr. Billstrom. Dr. David Billstrom is a fellow of the American Academy of Integrative Medicine, as well as an advanced fellow in anti-aging, regenerative, and functional medicine. He is on a mission to revolutionize how autoimmune and chronic diseases are treated worldwide by teaching the science-based fundamentals of functional medicine. He has been practicing for over 30 years, is quadruple board certified in functional and regenerative medicine, integrative medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation, and medical acupuncture. Dr. Billstrom is the director of the International Autoimmune Institute, the first medical center in the country associated with a teaching hospital to treat all types of autoimmune disease using functional medicine. Dr. Billstrom wrote the book, The Nurse Practitioner's Guide to Autoimmune Medicine, reversing and preventing all autoimmunity and has a vision to see an NP in every community who specializes in preventing and treating the root cause of autoimmune and chronic disease. Thank you so much for joining us today and welcome. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. How are you feeling today, Dr. Billstrom? It's a great day for many reasons, including my son's drive and home to spend the weekend with us. That's a, something to be happy about. Yeah, it is lovely. Nice. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. My very first question or statement is this. I learned that approximately 80% of people who get autoimmune diseases are women. Other than hormone differences, why are females uniquely at risk for autoimmune disease? One thing people may be going, well, where's the cancer part? So exactly. one thing to know is that cancer is the flip side of the exact same coin that causes autoimmune disease. And so everything that's done to prevent or reverse autoimmune disease is preventing or reversing the reason why people get cancer. So the immune system disruption and the immune system is this lovely example of how the body likes balance where you don't want things too high, you don't want things too low. So like blood pressure, blood sugar, where you don't want to be too high, where you don't want to be too low either. Well, the immune system is so interesting because when you lose the set point right in the middle of the immune system, you actually go up and down away from that set point at the same time. And so the overactive immune system issues are all the autoimmune diseases where the immune system has gotten confused and will actually start attacking our own body parts. And that's basically we're self-destructing and, you know, kind of rule of thumb, you never want to be self-destructing. That's a tad counterproductive for health, right? Right. Well, the underactive immune system things are infections, recurrent infections, like even in kids, you start seeing this disruption, like recurrent ear infections, strep throat, sinus infections, pneumonias, bronchitis, recurrent bronchitis, pneumonias, urinary tract infections, all this and cancer. So when you lose that set point and move away from it, you're always heading towards not only autoimmune disease, but cancer as well. Now, one of the very lovely things is the science is very clear why we lose that set point and move away from it. But also the science is very clear how you can reestablish that set point. So you put yourself in a position to not get autoimmune disease, not get cancer, or as the case may be. And unfortunately, and I think you and probably most of your listeners know this, 
when, when somebody gets cancer, we want to get rid of the cancer, of course, you know, mm-hmm. surgery, radiation, chemo, whatever it takes, right, to get rid of the cancer. But you also want to get rid of the reason why you got the cancer. Otherwise, right. the why keeps pushing you back the same direction. And you're much more likely to get the same cancer again or again. And this is where you hear people go, I'm in remission. Well, I've had it now a second time, but I'm back in remission. And I got a third time. And we're like, well, crud, you know, if you don't get rid of the reason why, you just keep getting pushed the wrong way. Or I had this cancer, well, now I got this cancer. And so with women, a really big reason why women lose this set point right in the middle is uh, because of estrogen dominance, where a woman has too much estrogen compared to their progesterone. Now, another reason that we may probably don't have time to get into is actually uh, the X chromosome. So women have two X chromosomes, guys have one X, one Y. Well, we used to think our genes were hardwired. Whatever we got, we got genes, DNA from parents, grandparents, and hopefully we got more good than bad. Right. Well, it turns out it's not what genes you have, even though there are some genes that you know are pretty important, like BRCA and stuff like that. But in the biggest picture, it's not what genes you have, it's which ones get turned on and turned off. And so it turns out there's a lot of bad genes Every cell in our body, got to turn them off. A lot of good ones, got to turn them on. But when you get flipped the wrong way, you start getting chronic health issues. And it turns out there are so many bad genes on the X chromosome that for a woman to be optimally healthy, preventing cancer, preventing autoimmune disease, heart attack, stroke, do, 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 all this a woman has to be able to shut down, silence at least 85% of the entire second X chromosome in every cell in the body. Almost shut wow. down an entire chromosome in every cell in the body to stay healthy. Ooh, that's a big job. Now yes. the body's designed to do that, and the body's really good at doing that. But there's certain things that really complicate that and make it not happen. And then the ball always starts rolling the wrong way, such as towards cancer, autoimmune disease, the estrogen dominance, the hormone imbalance, is probably the most, well, I call it the most dangerous disease for women, because not only does it create this immune system disruption, and I'll go into a little more of that, but we now know that so many chronic diseases are actually immune system related and being contributed by this estrogen dominance, that if you look at the top 10 reasons why women die, almost 90% of those reasons have involved with them this estrogen dominance and immune system disruption. So of course, things like cancer, autoimmune disease, but also heart attacks, stroke, Alzheimer's, dementia, diabetes. Oh my gosh, the only one that is not really tied into this is accidental death. Yeah. And so if you can get the hormone balance, like this estrogen dominance, let's say in a really good place, you're in a position to basically prevent all disease, or if you get it once, prevent it from ever happening again. And we're trying to really educate people on what are the signs of this estrogen dominance to kind of say, hey, I got this stuff going on. I don't want this stuff as it is, but now I know where it's heading me. And I know it's heading me towards cancer in a humongo way. I'm going to throw some <laughs> statistics out. You guys going to go, what? Um, but also autoimmune disease. So we want to educate people what it looks like when it starts, and then we can really be in a position to prevent it. Or people that get cancer, like women who get cancer, they may go, oh my goodness, that was that estrogen dominance. I never knew what that meant. Now I can see why I got the cancer the first time, but now I know what I need to do to not let it ever happen again. Yes. Thank you for explaining that. Dr. Billstrom, when you are working with women, and as you stated, there's an increased risk of numbers in cancer in women with untreated estrogen dominance. How do you work with women to determine that's what's causing a lot of their problems? For example, what particular test? Is there a questionnaire? How do you determine that estrogen dominance is the main issue that's causing their health problems? It's really easy to test for things, even though most times things don't get tested for that will yes. tell us you know, exactly why something's going on. It might say why, what we got, but it won't say why we got it necessarily. So a simple blood test that can be run in any clinic, any hospital, anywhere in the world, basically, would check for two different estrogens, estradiol and estrone. They call estradiol the good estrogen, estrone the not so good, and then progesterone. So basically, it's like three tests. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But women will know they have the estrogen dominance even without the test. 
Now, tests are lovely. They kind of help. You know, we don't want to waste anybody's time doing something they don't need. But you know, as a woman or as a or as a parent of of a, a child who's going through this too, is estrogen dominance is the cause for too much estrogen, not enough progesterone, estrogen dominance, all the hormonal menstrual issues. So whether it's bad flows, bad cramps, PMS, ovarian cysts, PCOS, fibroids, endometriosis, infertility, that's all estrogen dominance. So if you see a teenager or an adult or a woman with any of those things, you got estrogen dominance, mm -hmm. okay? Absolutely. And you go like, oh, well, now I know why it's so common because like, holy cow, just about everybody has that stuff nowadays, right? But also because estrogen revs and progesterone calms, mm -hmm. it shows up as excessive worry, anxiety, insomnia, sleep issues. It can show up as panic attacks, irritability, because you got rev without calm. And then you look around, you go home, holy cow, not sleeping, more anxious than you probably want to be. It's like, that's so common, right? So if you look at the hormonal menstrual things, and the rev without calm things, it's almost like, well, what woman doesn't have that nowadays? It is so right. hard to stay healthy nowadays. Which woman doesn't have that stuff? Now, unfortunately, you know, if a woman has this like anxiety, insomnia, and panic attacks, well, you may uh, go to somebody and be given a medicine to create calm, like Xanax, let's say. And you go, hey, I feel calmer. I must have fixed the problem. Well, one thing that you know is not causing this anxiety, insomnia, panic attacks you know, it's got to be coming from someplace. But one thing you know for sure is it's not a Xanax deficiency because no woman has Xanax in her body. Exactly. It's something, but it's not a Xanax deficiency, but it can give you this false sense of security. Like, oh, I fixed the problem. It's like, no, if you had those things, well, okay, you know, something to create calm. Now there's better things with less side effects than Xanax, but hey, I created calm. Great. I can get through my day now, but we missed an opportunity to fix this estrogen dominance that would have, prevented her from ever getting cancer, ever getting autoimmune disease. And then an even worse scenario is with this hormonal menstrual stuff, this estrogen dominance that shows up hormonal menstrual stuff. So oftentimes this estrogen dominance driving all this stuff, oh, you have bad flows, bad cramps, bad PMS, you know, fibers, endometriosis, ovarian cysts. Well, we're going to give you birth control pills and we're going to, you know, basically kind of put you in menopause. Now, menopause is totally fine, but not necessarily when you're a teenager, a 20-something, a 30-something. That's not how the body's supposed to work. But we're going to shut down your hormones. We're going to stop you from uh, having these symptoms. And you go, oh, okay, I'm feeling a lot better. But what you've just done, because birth control pills are estrogen-based, you just yes. made this estrogen dominance worse. Yeah. And then if it gets really bad, a woman might be encouraged to have a hysterectomy. Well, you know, you got this bad flows, bad cramps, you're, you're, you're done having kids. Hopefully it, it, it comes that late, but sometimes it's even before women has a child, right? Well, we're going to do a hysterectomy. We're going to take out, or we'll take out one ovary because you have cysts that really give you pain, but we'll leave the other ovary in it. Well, anytime you change the anatomy down there, it actually makes the estrogen dominance worse again. And so all those things kind of give you this false sense of security, but actually makes the problem worse. And then you're going towards cancer and autoimmune disease, even a higher level. So we're trying to educate women is when you see that, we want to teach you how to fix it because you don't need the bad flows, bad cramps, all that kind of stuff. You don't need the panic attacks, insomnia, but because we're going to fix it the right way, well, now you're not going to get the cancer. We're doing our due diligence. You're not going to get the autoimmune disease. And because the immune system is tied into so many things, you're probably not going to get diabetes and heart attacks and strokes and Alzheimer's, dementia, obesity, and all these things yeah. as well. Dr. Billstrom, as you were talking, it made me think about something. A lot of women who get, for example, chemotherapy, they are informed that, hey, this may impact your fertility. A lot of times women actually who were having a menstrual cycle prior to chemotherapy no longer get that. And so are you able to explain, Dr. Billstrom, how cancer treatment fits into all of this? Yeah. So, you know, you want to do it's a little bit like we talked about somebody to create calm. Well, if you've got so many panic attacks and you can't sleep, you can't get through your day, you can't care for your children, whatever, you got to do something. Got to get through your day right. But ideally, you want to use it to kind of buy you time to go back and figure out why it happened. And then ultimately, you'll feel your best because even though maybe 
you know, this is better, that better. You still got the, all the other stuff going on too. Well, now you can feel really good and then you prevent stuff. So like with the chemo, the radiation surgery, you know, if you have cancer, you got to do what you got to do, mm -hmm. right? But now that you're kind of done with that, or there's some things you can do during that time that will even help the chemo work better, help the surgery work better, help the radiation work better. You can actually, some of the things that you would do to prevent cancer actually will help treat cancer and help the more traditional interventions like chemo actually work better, including you won't get the side effects of those interventions. So like, you know, one thing is, well, if I'm gonna use chemo, I wanna get the biggest bang for my effort. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, the nausea, vomiting, the fatigue, the stuff is so bad, I can't do my whole course. Yes. Well, we want you to get the benefit from your chemo. Full benefit, right? So if you do these other things that you can do to prevent cancer or prevent it from coming back again, you do it during that time when you're treating the cancer and trying to get rid of it, it's going to help the chemo work better. And it's going to help your body tolerate the intervention so you can get the go through the full chemo dose, the full radiation dose. You come out of surgery doing great, you know? So it, it really helps in that respect as well as the, uh, so like one of the ones that we use it's actually, it's amazing what the body will do to prevent cancer. And it's amazing what you can do knowing those things to actually get rid of cancer once it's there as well. And so there's uh, something made by the good bacteria in the gut, intestinal microbiome, a mix of good, bad bugs in the gut that they call a short chain fatty acid. And one of them is called butyrate. Well, butyrate's really good for keeping away inflammation in the gut and it prevents colon cancer. Oh my gosh, this butyrate actually prevents cancer five ways and actually treats cancer five ways. Oh, wow. It gets rid, it helps get rid of cancer even when it's there. And this butyrate helps the chemotherapeutic agents that we use a lot of times, like cytoxin, for example, actually work better. It's in combination, works even better than the cytoxin all by itself. And it all by itself is helping kill cancer. My wife and I lectured in Casablanca, Morocco back in March in integrative cancer care. And we were the only English speakers invited. Everybody else was French speaking because all the French speakers of North Africa and Europe. So I had to get my slides in extra early because I need to translate <laughs> it in the French, right? And so about six weeks before the, the conference, I go, holy crud, I got to change a couple slides because this butyrate on my slides, it says, well, prevents cancer four ways, treats cancer four ways, actually kills cancer cells. Mm -hmm. I had to change it to prevents cancer five ways and treats cancer five ways. Oh, and wow. I go, oh, this is so neat. You know, this data that's coming out, bing, bing, bing. This is like every day we know more than we did before, including, you know, about what will kill cancer cells. And that's very important, not just when you have cancer, but, you know, day in, day out, our cells are turning cancerous. Mm -hmm. We have to have a really healthy immune system to dive in, nip that cancer cell in the bud before it ever has a chance to start growing and multiplying. So this is where if somebody gets cancer, like, immune system dude what were you doing sleeping on the job here this is your job to kill the cancer cells exactly. when you first came, it's like well if you got a disrupted immune system not only is it driving you to cancer but it's autoimmune disease so you want that really great immune system but in women boy that estrogen dominance tells you where you're going including and, and this is kind of the it rocked my socks when i figured this stuff out the science so when a woman has estrogen dominance before menopause whether showing up as the hormone, hormonal menstrual things, the rapid calm things, she has a 5.4 time greater risk of getting breast cancer before menopause. Doesn't wow. double her risk, doesn't triple her risk, a 5.4 times greater risk of breast cancer before menopause. And you think, oh my gosh, if everybody knew this, on the morning uh, news programs, Good Morning America, there'd be a ticker down there, oh, yeah. something was discovered <laughs> that doubles breast risk of breast cancer, we're going to do something about it. Not double, 5.4 times, but also... It increases the risk at 10 times the risk of getting malignant cancers your whole life. The ones that start one place and travel all over places, like the that's the last thing you want a cancer cell to do is to travel that's some right. other place. 10 times greater risk. So this is where if, if we want to teach women the signs of estrogen dominance, they get rid of the hormonal menstrual stuff. They get rid of the red without calm, sleeping like a baby, chill, no panic attacks. I'm so calm. This is lovely. Oh, by the way, we just got rid of this humongo driver of cancer, but also this humongo driver of autoimmune disease as well. Thank you for explaining that. Dr. Billstrom, I have worked with a couple women who actually had autoimmune disease issues 
and they developed breast cancer, for example. And so what you have explained to me so far helps me better understand why it was particularly breast cancer. I knew there was a correlation between autoimmune disease and cancer, like any form of cancer, but I was not aware of the estrogen dominance that plays a big part for women. So that is very important for women who are facing breast cancer, maybe to ask for those tests. That's blood work, I'm assuming. Yep. yep yeah. Simple. Okay. And just to get that education, it really helps me better understand that yes, there is a correlation with that estrogen dominance hormone, really important. And you really see it go both ways. You'll see people with autoimmune disease who use bandage medicines, the immunosuppressants that suppress the immune system. If you know you have an immune system disruption when you have an autoimmune disease, you already have this increased risk of cancer. Well, those medicines by suppressing the immune system will increase your risk of cancer further and so you see women with autoimmune disease that end up getting cancer. Oh, crud, right? But you also see it the other way, too. And so one of my favorite actresses, I won't name names, but people might know this. So she was diagnosed with breast cancer, I believe, like in her late 20s, early 30s. Well, they did the BRCA testing. They said you got the BRCA genes. She opted for a double mastectomy, right, to mm -hmm. prevent hopefully ever getting breast cancer. But that doesn't take care of the immune system disruption, right? And so here she is now. Oh my gosh, she was on some of the most popular shows around. She can't even act anymore because she has multiple sclerosis. Oh, wow. And I look at that, I'm like, oh my gosh, she never had a chance to go back and fix why she got the breast cancer. She felt a false sense of security by just having the BRCA test, a little mastectomy, which you can imagine. I mean, the, the physical and emotional toll that took to have that kind of surgery alone. But then time goes on, immune system disruption never addressed. And there she's dealing with an autoimmune disease as well. That correlation is really evident and strong. And getting to the root cause, I cannot stress that enough, getting to the root cause. And sometimes it may take going to a couple of different doctors to make sure that you're getting to that root cause. Because just the example you just shared, Dr. Billstrom, it's a great example of how not getting to that root cause can cause you to go in different directions that actually make things worse and have you doing things to your body that you may not necessarily have to do if you really understood what was the underlying cause. People, you know, uh, want to take charge of their own health. They mm -hmm. want to figure this out. People can kind of sense they're not getting the full picture a lot of times when they see a medical practitioner who might be great over here doing this stuff, but may not necessarily know this over here. Cause of course, nobody knows everything. Right? right. And so, you know, if you're going to ask me how to prevent a disrupted immune system, how to reset the balance, I can tell you that. But if you say, well, what chemotherapeutic agent do I use? You know, how, what's, how would I do that? Don't ask me to do that stuff any more than you'd ask me, well, what about these medicines that increase cancer risk when you have autoimmune disease, like methotrexate and embryo. Don't ask me. I don't know how to use those guys. There are mm -hmm. people that know that stuff, but it's not me. But these other folks don't necessarily know this stuff. And so this is where we really want to empower people, women themselves, to really take charge of their health. And because cancer is the flip side of the auto, same thing as autoimmune disease, so like we have the autoimmune hope course. We educate people where autoimmune stuff comes from, but it's also educating women on where cancer comes from. And let's say, like in my case, my mom had breast cancer. My aunt had breast cancer. My grandmother had breast cancer twice, right? So it runs in the families. And so if you see that common, ooh, yeah, I can see this running in my family. I make sure I don't want to. These are the tools you can use to prevent yourself from getting cancer. Or if you're a woman with cancer, only prevent getting it again. And then I kind of know where my teenage daughter, my 20-something-year-old daughter is probably going. We can use these tools, this knowledge to help prevent the next generation from ending up having to deal with these cancer autoimmune things as well. So that history of family cancer is very important to talk about those things, to know your family's history so that as you are explaining, you can find ways, use your tools to break the cycle of younger members and of family members getting cancer, preventing that. You know, in medicine, if there's not a prescription medicine for something or a surgery, we're not so great a lot of times at giving people tools. So when you know the, the language the body speaks, it actually is not hard to 
prevent this stuff or prevent it from happening again once it's happened once. Now, typically in more traditional medicine, when somebody goes, well, what can I do to prevent cancer? What can I do to prevent getting it again now that I've had it the first time and all this? And we're simultaneously being told things that are very vague and very yeah. complicated. Change how you eat and exercise. Yeah. And you're like, well, that sounds really complicated. Like what kind of exercise and what kind of eating? But it's also like super vague and hard. It's like, well, I got and totally changed different. everything in my life. And we're like, no, no, no. The body's too smart. We know this stuff. And so, for example, vitamin D. So vitamin D ideally is made by sun exposure. But <laughs> humans are terrible at making vitamin D from sun exposure. Okay. Nowadays, for a variety of reasons. So ideally, we want vitamin D levels between 70 and 90. Okay. Now, if you have had cancer, you've had multiple sclerosis, I mean, you probably want to be closer to 100 or more. If you have Parkinson's, you want more than 100. You have, have had heart attack and stroke, you want to be definitely more than 95. But the lifeguards in San Diego are in the mid 40s. They're 40 points lower than they should be. And they got great tans. They're on the beach all day long in San Diego, right? And the darker your skin is, the harder it is to make vitamin D from sun exposure on top of that. And so we go, okay, 70 and 90. We know that that's very clear that if a woman gets her vitamin D above 60, still about 20 points, 25 points lower than ideal, just get your vitamin D above 60, a woman has automatically cut her risk of ever getting breast cancer by 82%. Wow. You, you take that to the population as a whole, we would be able to prevent 82% of all breast cancer simply by getting women's vitamin D above 60. How did now, they do that? We also know that if you get your vitamin D up 30 points, you will automatically decrease your risk of ever getting any kind of cancer by 25%. And so if most people totally tank. If you get it perfect, you automatically decrease your risk of getting any kind of cancer by 50, 60%. Yes. And then breast cancer prevention might be greater, but then the corollary would be, okay, if a woman's vitamin D is above 50 during pregnancy, not even perfect, just 50, she's automatically decreased the risk of her child ever getting multiple sclerosis, the autoimmune disease, by 50%. Wow. So this is that kind of cancer autoimmune kind of correlation. And so that's where supplementation, if somebody's not on the right dose of vitamin D, they're tanked. So with the right supplementation, and it's a simple blood test, just like the estrogen progesterone were, nowadays, it's even more easy because people can go online and order their own blood tests. And it can be pennies on the dollar that it might cost them if they haven't met the deductible or heaven forbid, don't have insurance in the first place. So you order your own lab test, you get a printout, you go to a lab, they run it for you, they give you the result. You did it by yourself, whether you could find a practitioner who wanted to do this for you at all. And so, such as in, in my book, The Nurse Practitioner's Guide to Autoimmune Medicine, Reversing and Preventing All Autoimmune Disease, Corollary Preventing All Cancer, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Flip side of the same point is we're trying to educate because we want somebody in every community that knows how to do this. But we also want to educate people themselves where this stuff comes from. So it's a book written for nurse practitioners, but it's also written for non-nurse practitioners. So we say, okay, this is where this stuff comes from. This is the exact blood test you do, poop test, saliva test, whatever the test is. Right. This is exactly how you interpret the data. So like for the vitamin D, we say, hey, this is what you ordered for vitamin D. You do it yourself. Let's say you get the result back. Well, we say, okay, well, this is your level. This is how much vitamin D you need to take. Go ahead and recheck yourself eight weeks later. See if it's perfect. If it's not, this is the change you make. Recheck it eight weeks later. Now you got it perfect. Check yourself once a year, kind of a thing. And you go, wow, that's that easy to like decrease my risk of breast cancer by 82%. And I'm like, yeah, the body is so smart. If you know the language the body speaks, oh my goodness, little things go a long way. Absolutely. Thank you for writing your book, Dr. Billstrom, Nurse Practitioner's Guide to Autoimmune Medicine, Reversing and Preventing All Autoimmunity. Please tell the audience where they can find your book. Also, is this book for just regular people who don't work in healthcare, but want to take charge of their health? You know, it is. Now, the, the Autoimmune Hope, Cancer Hope as well, is available on my website. We also, because we want to educate all the practitioners out there. So let's say your oncologist, your family doc, and you're making some choices regarding the cancer stuff. There's a, a master class for medical people. There's even an advanced class that I put together that has CME credit where doctors and nurse practitioners 
uh, can get their continuing education credits by learning this stuff. Rather than having to go to a conference, they can learn this. And I would say, please, if you know nurse practitioners, please share this information with them. Because I really think that nurse practitioners being more holistically minded, more focused on the person than the disease, and yes. doctors, medical doctors tend to be, I really think they're the hope. And we're trying to get this community of nurse practitioners everywhere in the world. Because fortunately, we're so fortunate, we actually see people uh, and children, oh my gosh, number of children with autoimmune disease, mm -hmm. including 70% of all autism is one particular autoimmune disease. So that, that's where autism can be prevented and reversed. We see people from 18 different time zones around the world. So this is information that people are, you know, everybody wants to know. And this is where we want a community of nurse practitioners everywhere that knows how this, but also to your point, we want to teach people themselves, empower people themselves through the courses we have available and the book. And about 80% the way through a book on estrogen dominance. I have some okay. really interesting things people may like to read on my website about estrogen dominance already. But they can find everything at uh, drdavidbilstrom.com and blog posts, the social media posts. I have over 150 YouTube videos, every one of them about a scientific article or three or four about that topic I'm talking about. So this is also, I think, very important. This is why on this book for non-medical people and nurse practitioners with a hundred different scientific references. So people know that this is not just one person's opinion, but this truly is the science of cancer, autoimmune disease, immune system disruption, chronic disease in general. Wonderful. I will include that information in the listen notes so that the audience can definitely check out your information, your book, materials, I will say definitely check out Dr. Billstrom's YouTube channel. It is very informative. I actually have referred to it several times. So thank you for all of that wonderful information that you put out. My next question, Dr. Billstrom, is why does women's health care almost completely ignore this topic? And what can women do about it? Up until just recently, basically men's health and women's health were considered the same. But all the research was done on men, including male mice, male rats. When they're doing, it's all men, right? And then they go, well, this must apply to women, which I, mean, I, I you, you guys might not see this. I see uh, <laughs> the lady <laughs> shaking her head. I'm going, I know it's ridiculous, right? It's unbelievably crazy. Makes no um, sense. And so everything that we tend to do is like for dudes, well, I'm sure it's going to be the right <laughs> thing for women. It's like, no, that is not how it works. Uh, this is where we want to empower women to learn this stuff like through our educational processes, for example, so they can take charge of their own health and then they can really advocate for not only themselves, but for their daughters and their aging parents and their friends and really change the way that women's health is dealt with. Very important. My next question, Dr. Bilstrom, is all about prevention if possible. What is a five-minute daily habit that could reverse and prevent disease? Take your vitamin D at the right dose. Do a couple minutes of some kind of relaxation, meditation, deep breathing, repetitive prayer, get out in nature, listen to a, an app like Insight Timer and Calm, because the stress hormone cortisol is always part of these chronic health issues. And we live in an incredibly stressful world physically, emotionally, spiritually. And so cortisol, they call the forgotten hormone. Yeah. Everybody forgets about it. It's actually the only hormone we'd be dead without. We'll feel pretty crummy without other hormones. We'll feel pretty crummy if we get imbalance of the hormones. But cortisol is one you're actually dead without. Everybody forgets it though. And so by trying to keep cortisol in a good place, not getting stuck in kind of this fight or flight mode, life or death mode, a bear's chasing me, trying to kill me, which drives... Classic symptoms, can't fall asleep, can't stay asleep because my brain's running, anxiety, panic attacks, extra weight around the middle, I grind my teeth, sensitive to loud noises, I bite my fingernails, I pick up my cuticles, I hold my shoulders up all day long, I get unusually fatigued or sore or brain foggy after exercise, boy, I can't seem to exercise my way out of this abnormal weight gain, even though you are exercising and, and eating well, you go like, Hmm, that cord is also important. So trying to manage stress, get your vitamin D in. That is a great way to really kind of cover a lot of bases in a very short period of time every day. 
So what you've described are things that people can actually do. It's very easy to do. But one thing, it might be very important to get those vitamin D levels tested so that you know where you stand. Yep, that is a big one. And then, of course, checking your estrogen and progesterone levels is just as easy. That's right. <laughs> and That's then with right. our educational stuff, we'll, we're trying to educate people how they can actually, of course, fix this themselves. But then we also go, of course, into more detail exactly why estrogen tends to go up while progesterone tends to go down. And then people go, oh, well, that makes such sense, including it's tied into cortisol in the gut. And we give people the tools they need to start turning that around. Ideally, if it's working as it should, a woman goes, oh, good. I don't have the bad flows, the bad cramps. I don't have the PMS anymore. My ovarian cysts we go away on their own. The fibroids and endometriosis will go away on their own. I'm sleeping like a baby. I'm so chill. I'm so calm. I'm not irritable. My kid stuff is cute. Doesn't drive me crazy <laughs> like it might be used to. <laughs> and they go, oh, I'm really nailing this estrogen dominance thing. And then, of course, women can order their estrogen and progesterone levels online by themselves now, too. Just for clarity for the listeners who may have missed this. So you work individually with, with women, but you also help nurse practitioners and people in the healthcare system. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're trying to educate uh, the nurse practitioners so that they can be a big part of the community health, whatever community they live in, really educate people because people won't know this stuff is really possible unless there's somebody oftentimes in the community well, was teaching them that, well, we know where this stuff comes from. We know how to address it and make it go away. So you don't get stuff in the first place, or if you got it, such as cancer, we're going to put you in a really good place. You never have to deal with it again. And there are some fascinating things you can do to get rid of cancer. If you got it and some fascinating things you can do to prevent it from coming back again. Oh, the, the science is just spectacular about this kind of stuff. Dr. Billstrom, someone has recently got a cancer diagnosis. As an autoimmune functional medicine MD, what advice do you have for them? Start doing your relaxation because that cortisol is already off and now you're probably freaking out as well. So creating calm is even more important than it was even before that. And then I'd say, you know, take the autoimmune hope course, read my book, uh, find a nurse practitioner locally who is willing to do the free course for medical practitioners, also read the book. And then start getting the test run to figure out why you got it. And by figuring that out, you're going to be starting to address things that are going to help you get rid of it, along with the more traditional stuff, including like that butyrate, for example, that we talk a lot about. It's going to help the chemo work better than it would all by itself. Like, oh, it's a great thing. No side effects. Thank you for laying that out so clearly, because that's what a lot of people lack, of course, especially if they never experience cancer. It's like, what do I do? And so having a very systematic plan, like what you described is very helpful. And it also helps people to take charge of their health, ask those questions that they need to ask while getting their care. Dr. Billstrom, what is something that people often misunderstand about you or your work? Well, I think one thing is they don't realize this is the science. And the science is very clear. Unfortunately, there's so much science, it's really hard to keep up with. So like, oh, going back in 1970, medical knowledge was doubling every seven years. Back in the Civil War, every 50 years. Well, now medical knowledge, well, in 2021, medical knowledge was doubling every nine months. I believe that. Mm -hmm. So this is where, you know, you can't hold it against some other practitioner for not knowing this stuff. Now, if they choose not to, learn it when they have the opportunity that's like maybe a different thing but nobody can knows everything but we know so much about this stuff don't let anybody tell you there's not anything else that you can do because the science is very clear that there is a lot of stuff you can do including things like melatonin which not only does it help sleep wake cycles but high dose melatonin has been shown to stop cancer progression in its tracks stage four breast cancer sorry chemo is done radiation we have nothing left off you if you use melatonin at the right doses, it'll stop the progression immediately. But also new data, last couple of years go, oh, actually melatonin kills those cancer cells. So just stop it, but kills it. And we go, well, that's cool. Well, here's butyrate. It actually prevents cancer five ways, treats cancer five ways. But actually the drug company made, and it kind of took the butyrate, which is naturally occurring, so you can't patent it, but they took the, the molecule, added some carbon atoms, patented it, now they're using it for 
lung cancer, they have no other options for us. Like, oh, that's so cool. There's one, uh, something made by the liver called Tubco. They think it's going to be an absolute game changer when it comes to preventing and treating this huge epidemic of neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and dementia and Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS and Heinz Korea. It also does this, 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 and this. Oh, by the way, it kills cancer cells too. Well, isn't that neat kind of a thing? And so you go like, oh yeah, there is data out there. And if people know this, they're going to be in a much better place. Exactly. I agree. Knowledge is power. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Dr. Billstrom, what is one I wish I would have known? And it can be about your work, life, anything. I wish I would have known all of this stuff before my folks passed away. Yeah. My mom died of Parkinson's. My dad had lung cancer, even though he was never a cigarette smoker. It probably came from his work environment. I was already kind of making this transition, but I didn't know what I know now. And I wish I did. It was actually when my original area of expertise is physical medicine and rehab. And I, I specialized in spinal cord injury. So everybody that I saw was paralyzed from the neck down to the waist down. Super challenging population, super sensitive to side effects. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, it's just something I can offer these people for these myriad of health issues that are so complicated, including something that you and I wouldn't even think twice about, like for a stuffy nose to go to the store, buy it, it could actually kill them. That's how mm -hmm. sensitive they are to meds. And so that's where I, I go, hmm, acupuncture. Wow. It helps all these things, no side effects. This is really cool. I'm going to learn this. So I, I went to UCLA and trained 30 years ago. It works so much better than I ever thought it would. It got me on this 30 year quest to, Oh my gosh, I went to school for a thousand years, including <laughs> I went to the University of Colorado for my, my residency and lived in Boulder, Colorado, which are really, you know, oh. kind of progressive. I never learned a lick about acupuncture, but when I worked so well, oh my gosh, including I'm six for six bringing people out of comas with acupuncture. What? in the ICU for like four months and somebody goes, hey, this person's never waking up. Isn't there somebody who does acupuncture? So five out of the six times it took 15 minutes, one treatment, 15 minutes, they woke what? up, where am I? And they woke up from their comas. So you can do about anything with it. And I go, wow, what else is out there that I did not learn? Oh my gosh, a 30 year quest. There's so much out there more and more all the time. And this is where we really have the power and the knowledge now to prevent chronic disease, such as really preventing so much cancer, but also we got a power to get at the reason why somebody got a health issue so it just doesn't come back. We get rid of it, it doesn't come back. Ooh, I feel empowered every day. There's nobody that I see, no matter how complicated, no matter where in the world we see them from, that I'm not absolutely convinced that we're going to be able to make them feel a ton better. And then by educating them, we're helping their children, their aging parents, their spouse, their friends. And if we all do this work together, like you're doing on your podcast. Thank you. And thank you. I just want to tell everybody how impressed I am. I love oh, the cancer doula. Thank oh you. my gosh. Does that speak volumes about what's being done? And we all kind of do this together. We can make a huge difference. Thank you so much, Dr. Billstrom. And you're right. Doing all this together, doctors in your line of work, and the oncologist working with you all, you know, it, it takes a team. It's not just one silo, one doctor that can help keep someone healthy. I really believe it takes a community and a village and people being willing to share that information, figure out how all these different things work together and then educate each other and all the people out there who need your help. So thank you for everything that you do. Is there anything else that you'd like to share before we end today? I would just like to, to thank you for what you're doing. My pleasure. Thank you for allowing me to share with you, but thank you for what you're doing because change is really good to come from outside the medical community. It's kind of like an in indie industry where the industry is really not going to change itself until change is demanded by their customers, right? This is in the automobile industry. It's in every industry. And so the medical industry, I think is the same. When people are demanding the medical community to change, that's when the medical community will change. And so I'm doing my best from the inside, but I think you're doing great. You're yeah. doing, and all your <laughs> listeners sharing with this information, I think it'd be much more powerful than anything I could ever say. Thank you so much, Dr. Bill Strum. And very encouraging, you know, that demanding change, we can do that. We can do that. We're the customers. We can demand that change. 
Dr. Bilstrom, before we wrap up, if anyone is interested in just really becoming more involved in functional medicine, even if it's just to help themselves and their families, where do you recommend they start? I know with your course, are there any other offerings that are for people who just want to take charge and improve their health? If you look at the two different levels of courses we have for non-medical people, but also there's no reason you couldn't dive into the autoimmune paradigm course that we have that is ideally for nurse practitioners, but it's really, because this stuff is such common sense. I think one thing that's kind of crazy is people will listen to these medical terms, long names, and go, well, this stuff is more complicated than I can figure out. I'm like, no, no, no. It is super, the body, yes, super, super complicated, but it is super, super logical. So you don't have to be a medical person to understand this, right? And so when you do the autoimmune paradigm course, which paradigm is preventing and reversing autoimmune disease in a global mission, you'll go, oh, I can see what's going on with my aging parents. I can see what's happening to my children. I can see what's happening to myself. And I now have the knowledge where I can go out and really make a difference in my family and medical practitioners themselves have a lot of different options, but there's not a lot of options for non-medical people, unfortunately, mm-hmm. other than myself sharing, trying to make educational courses. When people take the Autoimmune Hope course, they'll get a lifetime access to the monthly question and answer session that I do. I, I'm so encouraged because as this really gets going, we have people that are medical people in that Q&A, non-medical people in that Q&A, parents of children with autoimmune disease in that place, people from Australia and England and Central America, that thing. I used to do Q&As for medical people, Q&As for non-medical people. I'm like, no, no, no. Everybody needs to be on the same page and talking. Mm -hmm. So this is where I love it, where there's medical people there, non-medical parents, and all this, all asking the same questions, all listening to the same answers, hearing questions from medical people, hearing questions from parents, Now everybody can learn all at the same time. And we're all a group, all working together to make this happen. Thank you for doing that. That is so important. Speaking the same language and coming together, because I think a lot of times the patient and the doctor are pitted against each other when really, I believe from day one, it should be a partnership, a team. And so I love how you structure that. I think it's very important. And I really hope, Dr. Bill Strom, that by listening to this episode of Navigating Cancer Together, the audience has walked away with a better understanding of the correlation between autoimmune diseases and cancer. And for women, a lot of the driving factors behind it, which is the estrogen dominance that we definitely want to make sure that women look into and get that taken care of. We go into great depth about the estrogen dominance in my book, The Nurse Practitioner's Guide. Some easy answers to start turning it around right away. Even if you haven't seen somebody who's a medical practitioner that knows this, you can already start doing it yourself. Dr. Bilstrom, it has been an absolute pleasure to talk with you today and honor. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with myself and with my audience. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Before we end today, I would like to give a shout out to the listeners. Thank you so much for joining us. Please share, follow, or subscribe so that you can easily find this podcast and listen again. You can also listen to Navigating Cancer Together on Amazon Music or wherever you get your podcast. Are you looking to expand your professional network? Please join me on LinkedIn. As an active member of the platform, I would like to personally invite you to connect with me. Let's grow our connections together. Search for Talaya Dendy, T-A-L-A-Y-A-D-E-N-D-Y-B-C-P-A. That is it for this Wednesday. And until next time, let's keep navigating cancer together. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of Navigating Cancer Together. I hope you found it helpful. Please be sure to subscribe, share, and tell your friends and family about it. For notes from the show and previous episodes, visit ontheotherside.life and check out the podcast section. I would love it if you join me for the next episode. Talk to you soon.